So I've been surrounded by music ever since I, I can remember. I've been singing since I was very young. I started playing guitar in the second grade and I've been producing beats on my computer since the eighth grade. The next logical step for me was always to make my own song, make my own music. But there's a few roadblocks in the way that prevented me from doing this. The first of which was never liking my own music. You know, I would hear my own song and I never would want to stick through with it because I just found it annoying. I couldn't stand hearing my own voice. I couldn't stand hearing what I wrote, the lyrics, everything. The second roadblock was the process of recording, mixing, and mastering, which I had not had enough experience in and didn't have the proper tools for. And so all of these roadblocks prevented me from ever getting to the place that I wanted to be in music. And that's where the Capstone Project comes in. From my capstone, I decided that this was an opportunity for me to get past those roadblocks and not only complete a project, but also learn something that is very valuable to me on the way, which is how to create my own music. And so my goal was to surpass these blocks and make a few songs that will start me on my music career. So to explain my process and how I learned to make music to the viewer, I'm going to break it down into four sections. The first being production and composition, the second being writing and lyrics, the third being mixing and mastering, and the last one is actually a bonus. It is the live song I made with my mentor. Starting in section one is production and composition. You see, this is something that was not very hard for me in the project because like I said before, I'd been making beats since the eighth grade and so I had a lot of experience actually making beats and I already had a process down before I got to this. So I'll take you onto my computer to show some of that process. So for my process of production, it basically consists of adding layers and layers and layers very slowly to build a whole set. I don't try to do too many things at once. So starting with this melody here, Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put that there. Starting with this melody here, it's just very simple. Nothing much to it, just a small bell sound. I added some texture to it. Then I added some chord stabs to it for percussion. And speaking of percussion, the next step I did was adding just a clap to it, some just small layers, right? But it, it's slowly starting to fill itself out, right? Added some hi-hats. That gives it some more rhythm. The next logical step would be the kick. I'm not gonna spend too much time on my production because this is not something I actually learned a lot on because I've been doing it previously. And I'll get more into what I learned in the next session, which is a uh, mixing and mastering, but I added just a few small drums and all of a sudden you put the bass in, you got a full beat. You know, it's it's not rocket science. It's, it's not as hard as it sounds, you know. This may look daunting to someone that has never done it before, but, you know, if you spend some time with it, it's, it's actually not as hard as it sounds. As for the process of recording my live song, or I guess composing it, so it, it actually wasn't too difficult either, you know. I was sitting on my guitar one night, and I was just fooling around with some chords. It sounded something like this. I sort of just like stumbled into that I was like oh well this is gonna be it like this is gonna be the one that I'm I'm gonna make this live song with my mentor off of and so it, it was as simple as that right I just took this and I that's what I knew I was like okay well now I can get into the hard part which is writing lyrics for it right I also have this one section in the song where it sounds something like this alternate section but you know it's just it's just a few chords it's nothing too crazy again this is the part that came a little bit more easy to me which segments perfectly into the first part that it was actually extremely hard for me was writing the lyrics you see for me writing lyrics was a huge roadblock because 
In my past attempts to make music, this is where I always quit first. Like this is the spot that I would just, I couldn't stand what I would write. I just, nothing felt right to me. Nothing felt like it was what I wanted to say. And it just came out in my head as, as cheesy and I couldn't stand listening to it. For this project, I made it my goal to push through those feelings and just say what was on my mind. Whatever was coming out of my brain, that's what I was gonna say. And making it so personal to me is what I think made it a bit better in that I was trying to, I was trying to be someone else in what I was making before. But in this music, I just wanted to say exactly what I was thinking and being true to myself definitely helped. After recording my lyrics and having made my beat, I got to the biggest roadblock in making music that I faced, especially because I do everything on my own. This was the hardest part. People hire engineers to mix and master their music because that's really what makes it sound good at the end of the day, is having clear and concise vocals, having a beat that isn't too messy, that is, uh, is organized in, in a fashion that people can hear each little part of it and everything does what it's supposed to do. This is by far the hardest thing to do in music and one YouTuber that helped me so much in this process was a YouTuber called In The Mix. He does detailed tutorials on compression, equalizing, reverb, delay, anything. And he does it on a program that I use as well called FL Studio. And so it was a blessing having him on YouTube and just all these YouTubers at my disposal to learn something as difficult as compression is equalizing. So the first process I'm gonna explain is called EQ. The idea behind EQ or equalizing is that you turn down or you boost certain frequencies in the sound. Take for example, you think the guitar in a song needs a little bit more bass. Okay, well you turn up the bass, you turn up the bass frequencies. You think it needs a little bit more treble, you turn it up like that, you turn up the treble frequencies or vice versa if you wanna turn it down. And so equalizing is such an important process because oftentimes there will be frequencies that clash with each other when you're making a song, a whole song. And you want certain frequencies to be turned down so that other frequencies can have the spotlight and the ones that you want to keep are there, the ones that you don't want are not there. And just in music, there's always these, these frequencies that you want to get rid of. It's, it's hard to explain. Let me show you. So here we have the sound that I have made for my other song, which is going to be called These Days. You'll hear it in the album as well. So in These Days, I have this, uh, these stabs, these chord stabs. It sounds like this. But see, I, I took the, the equalizer off of this so you guys can hear what it sounds like without it and with it. Here's it with it. As you can hear now, it's actually a lot more clear and some of those frequencies that were making it a bit muddy actually are gone now. You, as you can see in the middle, there is a sort of frequencies here that I, I turned down a bit and I boosted these upper mid frequencies, which you can see right here. Basically this area is like, you can adjust everything, right? And this changes how the sound actually sounds just based on like where I move this wave. You know, I, I, I don't want treble to come in, let's say, I drop it all the way to the ground. Now you got no more treble. But I do want the treble to come in, so I'm gonna bring that back up. And so, by putting an equalizer on it, I can highlight the sounds that I do want, and I can get rid of the sounds that I don't want, so that if I do hear this with the rest of the song, it sounds like it fits in a lot better. So here's the whole song, no equalizer on this sound. These days up. Am I supposed to hear that? So here's the whole song, no equalizer on it. See, the melody is kind of overpowered by everything else that's going on. But if I put that equalizer back on, 
it sticks through so much more. Just like that. The second process that I learned is called compression. Now, this is where I had so much trouble. And thanks again to In The Mix, because I would not have gotten it without it. The idea behind compression is that when you're singing, there's a lot of vocal inconsistencies. There is parts where you're singing a lot louder and there's parts where you're singing a lot quieter. And what compression does is it basically, it lowers the higher sounds so that they can work together with the lower sounds and the lower sounds don't get drained out by those high sounds in the mix. Let me go and explain this again on my computer. So we're back on the FL Studio, and here I'm just gonna show you this wave before I actually get into like showing you the compressor. As you can see here, the wave is really high. It's it's a big tall wave versus if you check right here, it's a lot smaller. And so that's what I mean when I say vocal inconsistencies. You might not be able to hear the difference so much here. It's, it's, it's a lot more subtle, but I, here I have my limiter. I'll, I'll turn it off and I'll play this little section of the song for you. These days I just don't wanna pretend I've been feeling really low, think I need to find myself now. So one way you can tell is like, if you check this thing right here, this is the the audio for my, my actual singing. These days I just don't As you can see, pretend, it's super inconsistent. Really it comes low. down low and it peaks high, high up there. If I put the compressor on, it stays around the same. You know, there's still some sections where my voice is louder because I still want to have some personality in my voice. But in that section where it's really, really loud, it just cranks it down a little bit and it helps control it. So now that I'm done talking about the mix of those songs I made on the computer, I can finally get into what I did with my mentor. My mentor is Mr. Fee. Some of you might know him as an art teacher. He also teaches jazz band, which is the class I'm in with him. And what he did for me in this project is that he has a lot of recording stuff for live instruments. So he has microphones, he has a computer that's set up for it, he has a mixing station inside the band room at the school. And so the idea is that he would help me by playing on my song with another buddy, his name's Owen Chetwind. Oh, and if you see this, thanks so much, man. Same with Mr. B. And basically, we recorded in the band room with Mr. Fee's supervision and experience. And basically, he helped me make a song that's live, which is something that's like, I didn't even think that I was gonna do for this project, but is another thing that I really wanted to learn at some point because it's actually a lot harder than doing it on the computer just because of all like the moving parts on it, right? I'll show some clips of us recording and you can see just a little bit of the process that goes into it and I'm excited for you guys to hear what I made. Closing, I learned so much from this project. I learned how to pass over that phase of just not liking what you make and I figured out how to finally write stuff that I'm proud of in the end. I, I don't find annoying and I don't find cheesy. And I learned how to mix and master vocals and beats, which is so difficult. I still can't do it well, but I'm definitely getting better. And that's just great. And the fact that I have both of those things like down to a degree just makes it so much easier for me to make my own music. And that means much more is coming in the future. Music is something that I just, I wanted to take to the next level for so long. And I'm just so excited that now I really have what it takes to make my own music. And uh, I'll put the album in the bio of this video and I hope you guys enjoy it. It's nothing crazy, but it means a lot to me.